Good morning. Well, this morning I've got a message from Jesus about suffering and love. Jesus, he says, My child, you must not be surprised when you suffer, for suffering is a kiss of my purifying love. Those who suffer little and think they are blessed fool themselves, for God allows great sufferings to the souls he blesses the most. Suffering purifies your own souls, like the suffering in purgatory, while suffering offered to me bestows many graces on other souls. My children, your lives here are so short, and yet so very many of you are wasting them. Once you die and leave this world, you will no longer be able to pray or offer sufferings in the same way, nor will you be able to increase or decrease your future level of glory in heaven. Imagine that each grace you receive will have eternal consequences. Only a foolish person would waste their life on earthly things when the glory of heaven is within your reach for all eternity. Well, what a profound message. And you see, Jesus is always teaching us, as is Mary, from a heavenly viewpoint, from the big picture, the eternal viewpoint. In other words, what we might say is the long term. And this world, of course, is all about short term. And I suppose he starts off by saying something quite challenging, that suffering is a kiss of my purifying love. Now, when we, for example, down here, we think of love like, I love anything, a pet, an animal, a child, a spouse, a friend, partner, whatever. We associate that with nice things, with giving them a kiss, with giving them a rose, with going on holidays or something, I don't know, buying their favourite food. We certainly don't associate it with inflicting suffering. And so when Jesus says then, um, suffering is a kiss of my purifying love, it can be kind of hard to take in for someone. Even for us who are following Jesus, at times it can be hard to take in. And for those people who don't know Jesus, it can even be harder to take in. But yet, when he says suffering is a kiss of his purifying love, he doesn't mean suffering for the sake of suffering. He means the fruit of suffering, what suffering does. And so you see, it's like a soul in purgatory. Souls in purgatory, for example, have to be purified. And the road to that purification is a suffering. But the suffering purifies them, knowing that one day the suffering will end, this purifying suffering will end, and actually they will come out as white and as bright as can be. And so it's the same thing with Jesus. Jesus is saying that suffering purifies our souls. And because of that, when Jesus loves your soul or my soul or someone's soul, he wants your soul to be purified. He wants your soul to be purified of self-interest, of pride, of lust, of selfishness, all these things. And so the only way to do that is through suffering. Say, for example, I don't know. You do something exceptionally generous, exceptionally kind, and everyone says, oh, that was wonderful, well done, and then you do it again. Well, you could ask yourself then, what are your motivations? Is your motivation because everyone says it's good, it makes you feel good, or is it out of pure love of God? So imagine then you do something good, and then even though it was totally good and inspired by Jesus, people go around and say, that was selfish, you're just looking for the glory, you're such a show-off, you're so prideful, you think you're better than everybody else. And as a result, even though it was all lies, it all backfired in your face. And yet Jesus might ask you to do the same thing again. So then if you have to do that again, after all that suffering, your intentions are purified. Because you will say, well, Jesus, I'm doing this for, me, for you, Jesus, regardless of what people think. And so it's the same thing. Jesus allows great sufferings at times to happen to us to purify our intentions, to purify our motivations. Because ultimately that's what he went through. Even though while he was alive, he enjoyed a certain amount of success while he was doing the miracles, the reality is, is that the crunch moment when he died on the cross, there was nobody. And so you see, if Jesus was just following human glory all his life, he wouldn't have been able to die on the cross because his followers weren't with him, everyone had abandoned him, he would have just given up. But he was following the Father's will. 
And so Jesus goes on to say, your lives here are so short and so very many of you are wasting them. Well, again, you see, Jesus is looking at the long term goal and Jesus sees that if we were smart, we would devote our lives to following him, to purifying our souls, to gaining graces and to becoming basically great saints. And he says, you see, that when you die, you are no longer able to suffer or pray in the same way. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, we've all heard that souls in purgatory can pray and that the souls in purgatory are praying for us. So obviously in purgatory, souls can pray, but they can't pray in the same way. They don't have a body down here. And the spiritual world, in terms of salvation, having a body is very, very important when having a physical body. And the prayer we say now with our physical bodies is different to the prayers that we can say afterwards when we don't have our physical bodies. And so the prayers and sufferings that we say now can contribute towards our salvation, can contribute also towards the salvation of others, and as a result can increase actually our degree of glory in heaven. So you might wonder, well, what does that mean? Well, it's a bit, little bit like, I don't know, you're 45 and you decide that you're going to increase your savings or increase the amount of money you're putting aside for your pension. Therefore, ordinarily, when you retire, you're going to have a larger pension. But by the same token, when we're down here, the graces and the sufferings that we're offering to Jesus down here, they can expand our souls and basically they can put into the eternal vault graces for our eternal retirement. Whereas when we die and go to heaven or when we go to purgatory, there basically it's a bit like when you retire and you've been saving all your life and now you retire. Now you're locked into that retirement. You can no longer um, put money into it. You can no longer work. And so basically the ship has sailed. You have to basically make do with what you have. And so that's what he's saying, that while we're alive, not only have we the opportunity to become saints, but we have opportunity to become great saints. Because the amount we put in, if you like, and the amount of time and prayer and the generosity that we have and that we give to Jesus, that is basically how much afterwards in eternal life our souls will have um, increased and expanded and in proportion then to the degree of glory that we will have. Now, he says, only a foolish person will waste their life on earthly things when the glory of heaven is within your reach for all of eternity. So I suppose what he's saying is like there is eternal life and we have a couple of decisions down here. And either we decide to enjoy our lives down here, to ignore prayer, to ignore God, to ignore praying for the world, to ignoring prayer for others, to ignoring our own souls, to ignoring confession, to ignoring um, living a righteous life. So either we just decide to eat, drink and be merry, pretend there's no God and sex, drugs, money, wealth, rock and roll, atheism, houses, boats, cars, holidays. So either we live a totally superficial type of a life where we have a bit of fun down here and basically spend eternity God knows where, um, hell at worst, um, a long time in pearl tree perhaps at best, and even when we get to heaven, basically um, minimum glory. You know, minimum. It, it, it's like not putting money aside for your retirement and then retiring and being on the state benefit or something. Minimum, okay? Or basically we say, well, hold on a second. We've only got a limited time down here to please Jesus, to follow Jesus. Let's do what we can for him. Let's pray. Let's evangelize. Let's purify our own souls. Let's help others. Let's bring other people to Jesus. And in the process of doing that and giving our whole lives, let us also become big saints so that when we're in heaven, we'll be as near to Jesus as possible and we'll be as bright shining as possible near to Jesus and near to Mary and near to the saints. And what Jesus is saying, that if you knew the glory of heaven, the majesty of heaven, the joy of heaven, you would want with every single part of your being to be as close to Jesus as possible, to be as full of light as possible, to be as beaming and happy and glorious as possible. And only an absolute fool idiot would waste their life on earth and superficial things if they knew what was at stake and if they knew how much Jesus loves them and how much they could please Jesus and how much they could use this life to be near Jesus for all of eternity. We're talking about the whole idea of eternity. And so even St. Peter says that in one of the letters to St. Peter, that if we knew the glory of heaven, then the little sufferings that come here, even though they could be big sufferings in terms of how we feel, but we would relativize them and we would say, wow. 
And so Jesus said that when he loves souls, he allows suffering to happen to these souls, to purify them, to grow them, to expand them. And so many of us who are following Jesus, I know most people I know in terms of prayer meetings and people that are very prayerful, very spiritual, most of them have big crosses. They either have health problems or they get terrible persecutions or else they have relatives that are very, very sick that they care about. There's not one single person that I know in prayer circles that I could say, oh, look at that person. They have the life of Riley. Everything is going well for them. But in fact, often it's the opposite. I can say that person has got so many problems, so many things bothering them if they let. At the same time, they're happy, they're joyful, they're going to Mass every day, they're praying the Rosary every day, and they're giving glory to God, and they have this smile on their face, even though God is allowing all these things to happen in their lives. And so at times that is our witness. It's not to say, I have Jesus in my life and I've got the life of Pi. No, it's to say I've got Jesus in my life and I have all the sufferings that other people have and perhaps more. But because I've got Jesus, I've got hope, I've got joy, I've got strength, I've got determination. I know I'm loved. I know I'm wanted. I know it has a purpose and therefore I can smile. I can be happy. So on that note, let us not get discouraged or think that somehow God is punishing us when suffering arises. But let us be humble, let us keep on going to him, let us keep on trusting in him, let's keep on making use of mass, keep on making use of the sacraments when we all find it a bit too much. And also let us continue to read and reread the lives of the saints and to meditate on the rosary, meditate on the life of Jesus, the life of Mary. Because when we do that, we realize that they did not get an easy life, that we will not get an easy life either with Jesus, but we can have great joy and great love knowing that this is how Jesus works, this is how Jesus treats those souls that are following him. And if we ha always have that attitude, well then no matter what happens, we can keep our peace, we can keep our joy, knowing that he is with us and he is guiding us. So on that note, I'm not going to wish you a suffering day, but I'm going to wish you a joyful day. And if you have suffering in your life, remind yourself it has a purpose, it has a meaning, God is allowing it, God allows it to those people he loves, it probably is agony, you might be finding it hard, but deep in your heart you are loved, you are wanted, it has got meaning, it has got purpose, and you are saving up for your eternal retirement in heaven, not to mention offering it so that other souls can meet Jesus. So do not be disheartened, keep on going, be joyful, and may Our Lady and the saints surround you, protect you, and give you that strength to know that you're doing amazing things for Jesus, you're pleasing him immensely in an invisible, hidden, but powerful way, and so let nothing discourage you and keep that joy in your heart, keep that hope in your heart, knowing that one day you'll be free of it all and you'll be dancing in heaven with all the angels and with all the saints, all of eternity, um, shining as bright as the brightest star. So on that note, have a great day and talk to you soon.